welcome. My name is Eduard. It's Eduardo Venegas Rabia. Uh, I'm from Mexico. I have almost five years working as developer. Most of my experience is with Go. So the topic that we want to present is gRPC plus Go. Uh, well, uh, the name of the client I'm working on is is Infoblox. Uh, it's him because uh, before this client, I didn't know anything about Go. And I realized how to easy is to define a service and all the benefits that has working with this framework. So um, let's start. I define gRPC as simple, secure, and faster. And let's talk about the concepts. What's an gRPC? Well, gRPC is an and robust uh, open source uh, RPC framework uh, used to build scalable and fast APIs. Uh, um, a bit of history is that gRPC was developed by Google in 2015, and, it, and it's a free and open source framework, I'll mention. Uh, it relies to HTTP2, uh, protocol buffers, and other different technologies that and to maximum uh, the 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 performance scalability and the security okay let's continue uh, one of the key concept of of um, the rpc is the the streaming the streaming where many process can take place in a single uh, request uh, this is possible uh, because we are using http2 one of the main difference between HTTP two, HTTP one, and HTTP two is that in for an HTTP two one, we need to do a request for every resource that we need, like in this image that we can see. So we have to create a connection for for every for every resource. And instead, on HTTP two, we can uh, get all these resources in in a single connection. And okay, let's continue. Uh, using HTTP two uh, uh, allows to has a different types of uh, types of API in 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 a gRPC. The the first one is unary is similar to the rest. We have a client that do a that can do a a request and the server that that will respond. And well, we have one of the, the benefits is we have we can have the server streaming that the client can do a, a request and the, and the server will respond a stream of data sequences. Uh, this could be in, in, in any order. Now, well, we have the client streaming, the client can do a, a stream of data sequences, and the server will return just a single response. And we have now the bidirectional streaming, where both now the client and the server can can send a, a stream of messages in, to each other. Uh, this will be independently. That means that that the the client and server can send messages in in any sequences. Well, how mentioned, uh, work with HTTP two has a lot of benefits. I'm gonna describe just uh, a few few and important concepts of HTTP2. Uh, one is the binary framework layer. Uh, unlike HTTP1, uh, HTTP2 uh, request and response are divided in small files uh, of messages and, and frame in binary format. This will improve the performance. There's a streaming, how I mentioned. Uh, the streaming is a bidirectional full duplex streaming in which the client and the servers can send uh, messages uh, in any order. Uh, HTTP2 implements a flow control messages, uh, enable a, a detailed control of the of the of the data that we send. The in memory uh, in flight messages, and in HTTP2, even the headers are encoded, so this will increase the also the performance in gRPC. And all these benefits of HTTP2 uh, allows to gRPC uh, to use fewer resources and has uh, a less latency between the server and the application. 
Another important technology, technology is that use a uh, gRPC, the protocol buffers, how we describe. Uh, it's a good serialization, the serialization protocols that enable the easy definition of service and auto-generation of client libraries. For this, we will need a, a protocol a proto of compiler or proto-C. That means that we need to define a protofile and in this and all this definition of the messages and service that we do in, in this in this file will be auto-generated the code for our client and servers. I'm gonna show you an example of this. This is a simple protofile where the latest version of the protocol buffers is Proto3. Similar uh, similar uh, as go, we need to define our package, then this case is grid. Uh, we have to define an option Go package uh, because we can work uh, gRPC in different languages. In this case, we are using Go and we have to define the or path. Uh, how mentioned, we need to define the messages and the service that we want to use. In this case, this message is used for the request. That's grid request that has a, a stream called first name. This is in the this one is the order of the of the fields that that's gonna has the messages, and we have the messages with response that has an string result and the number one. This is the service, the grid service, and this and this and this is the RPC where we have three, uh, where we receive the messages. This one, and we return the response that we define. So here is a simple unary um, type of gRPC, just where the client do a request, the a grid request, and the server will return a grid response. Uh, in the second grid many times, the client will do a request and the server will return a stream of grid response. That, that means that we gonna send uh, many, many grid response. And in the third one, we have the RPC long grid. That means that the client is going to do a stream of grid requests and the server is going to return a single grid response. Uh, this is uh, this is these are some companies that are using in gRPC, Google, Netflix, IBM, Cisco. Uh, so far, any questions? Okay, <laughs> let's continue. Uh, I'm gonna show a, a simple gRPC. Uh, I'm using Golan. I'm Golan and I'm gonna use a make, make file. Uh, I wanna explain this later, but it's a tool that, that is gonna help to auto, automate uh, scripts. Okay, first how I show in the image. Uh, we have our proto syntax, the current version proto3. We have the package, grid, the language, that is go, the path, the meshes that we're going to use as the request, and the mesh that we're going to use for the response. We have the service that we name as grid service, and we have three RPCs. I'm going to show a simple example of how we can um, define a, a server. We have our main, uh, but, but first we, we have the, our protofile and we're gonna create a, our proto of Golan dependencies or, or the code that we define here in the proto. For this, we need to run a, a, a command to compile this protofile. Uh, okay. uh, the command is this. We have to define proto C, proto compiler. We have to define the, the path. Uh, this is uh, some options that we need to define also for the outputs. And I, but I don't want to, um, to spend time in, in every parameter that we need to define. I'm gonna, I wanna show you just how we can uh, use this. Uh, but well, I, uh, for generate the, the proto files, I want to delete this for, for show how it's working. I want to use a make file, grid, that is how I name this function. 
and this will uh, run the protocompiler. This is the, the path, some module options, and this will generate a, or proto, proto files. Well, well or, or go fight, sorry. Uh, in, the first, uh, in the first file, we can see that we have all, all the strokes that we're gonna use for the, for the meshes. This is the grid request, it's an stroke, has we define here, the request. We can see that we have the first name and another uh, uh, values that, that needs uh, the, the, the proto. Here's the first name, and also we have the grid response. We can see here, the grid response that has the result, that is the one that we define here, and another, uh, fields that are important to the proto. And also, this will auto-generate the, the server, uh, this grid service we can find in here. The grid service server, which is an interface that has uh, embed some methods, the grid, grid many times, and long grid, that's these are the RPC that we define in in our proto file. Grid, grid many, and long grid. Uh, well, and also this will create the client. We can find that is an interface. So we can use this uh, to uh, generate our own server and define our own functions. Uh, as we can see now, in, in I wanna show how we can create a server. Uh, well, we have to define an address. This is the port where the server will run. Uh, here we are using uh, netlisten to with the port. We are adding the, we are creating the, the gRPC server. This is the library for use gRPC. And we are adding this server to the grid service server. This was, was auto generated, how I mentioned. So we are adding here the, the server and, and the, this struct uh, that, has an, um, that has an embedding uh, interface here is the one that I show for the server. And the server is listening in the product that we define. So I want to. I'm gonna run this. Okay, the server is listening. Let's take a look to the to the client, how we can define it. It's pretty similar. We have the, the port, we have to create the connection. Uh, uh, an important benefit of use uh, gRPC is that we can uh, define a security layer. Well, but in this case, I, I, I wanna create a RPC connection without uh, credentials, just for keep simple. Okay, we have the connection, we use a defer, and we are adding the connection to the service client. This was, how I mentioned, this was auto-generated auto -generated by the proto, proto file. We are adding the connection and, well, let me show you first a simple uh, method. I define this um, grid. This grid is belongs to this. And here is the request that we are defining here. And this is the response that we are returning here. So that's how it works. And we can, and how, how we can know if, if we, take, we take a look, we can see that has a, another value that is the context. And this is what's automatically added by the proto. If we take a look to the, to the um, interface, we can see there. Read that receive a context and a request and return a res response and an error. So that's how we need to define our functions. Here, when we um, call a grid function, we wanna print a, a log, 
and I'm going to add hello to the to the request that we send. And okay, now for the client, we have to define a a, a function that calls the grid. Uh, okay, well, I also just printing a a log and added the context. It's a background and the request. In this case, I'm gonna send uh, a name, John. And if you find an error, we wanna print the error. And if not, we are gonna print the the value that was returning by the server. So we have the the client. You wanna call a do grid. I wanna run. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Okay. The grid was invoked. That, and we are returning the greetings. Hello, John. That is what we define here. Greetings, hello John. And in, if we take a look to the server, we can see that the grid function was invoked. So how I mentioned, uh, working with JPC has um, has a lot of benefits, and also we can define a stream, a stream type of data. So I want to show you an example. Uh, I want to call grid many times that that this when we can receive a stream of data. From the client, and if you, if we see we have a four, we are gonna send a many many response with the um, with a counter. So let's run this. But for for run this in in the client, we need to define also the, the function that's gonna call this. We are gonna just call in grid many times. We're gonna take the if there's an error, we wanna print. And if not, we want to use a stream, the stream value that we get here. And if there's, and we want to break this uh, for loop until we receive an end of file. So in that moment, we want to stop uh, to receiving the, the stream of data. So I want to go to the main of the client. I want to call now to create many times. But first we need to compile again because I'm calling directly the the bin. We can see that we are receiving the the messages from the server. And if we take a look to the server we can see that the server was called. Now let's do an example with the long read when this and when the client send a multiple uh, requests to the server. Okay, this is the do long read. This is how I call. I'm gonna send uh, different names. Okay, and then we create the stream, long read. And here is when we are going to send the, the request values in this for loop. I'm going to add a time, time slip just for see how we are receiving the, the values. And when we have a close and recovery, and we're going to catch the response. And if there's an error, I'm going to print it. And but if not, I'm going to just print the result. And in the long grid from the server, what we are doing is receiving the stream of data from the client until we receive an end of file. I, in that moment, I want to close this and send the, the result. In this case, I'm just adding a hello before the name. Okay. But for this, let's comment this.
I have to compile again. And now let's run the client. Sending. We can see the logs that we are sending the values. And this is the response from the server. How we can see the long grid was invoked. So this is working successfully. Okay. Uh, I want to show you, uh, well, how I describe this, mm -hmm. like a, a real example of a gRPC implementation because this was an, a simple uh, gRPC. But before this, uh, so far, any questions? Okay, then let's continue. Uh, before continue, uh, showing this this uh, gRPC, I want to um, show you that before this, I need to create uh, a DB that in this case is contacts app. I create also a, a table contacts because we are now, I want to show you how to implement this with a, with a simple DB. And for do the request the, with HTTP, uh, I'm gonna use the the tool that provide uh, Golan for do a simple request. Uh, one important thing that we can uh, use in gRPC is that we can add plugins. In this case, I'm gonna show a plugin for a reverse proxy to convert our HTTP, HTTP request to gRPC. This is helpful sometimes because uh, one of the problems that has gRPC is that um, just a few browsers support HTTP2. So with this plugin, we can uh, accept uh, HTTP requests and this will automatically uh, transform the request that we are receiving to gRPC. Uh, for this, uh, we can also uh, do some imports because I'm using uh, for the DB I'm using Gore. I don't know if you have like many experience working with this, but it's a uh, object international model that will help you to uh, to generate or structs for the DB. And also this plugin will uh, auto generate the basic um, CRUD for uh, our table. And for the gateway. That is that the one that's gonna translate the HTTP request into RPC. We need to uh, add some uh, specific specifications to the RPC. We have to add Google API HTTP. We need to define the HTTP bear that in this case is a post for the create. We this is the how we want to define the endpoint contacts and the body. Also for read, uh, if you can you can notice that this is um, very similar to define an, an endpoint. We have the, the option again, API HTTP, but for this read, we wanna use the HTTP where get and the contacts uh, plus the ID. For the date, we need to specify more things. We need to use a put, the body and additional guidance. Well, how, how we can do this? Uh, this is uh, taken from the get uh, proton gateway proton gen gateway. This is the name of the plugin. And well, also for the delete, we have to specify the verb. In this case, it's a delete and the option and the method and the object that we're going to delete in for this. In this case, the contact. Uh, we can see that we have the contact. This is related to the to the table that we define. I'm going to show you, this is the contacts. I'm gonna show the, the script for this. As you can see, it's a table that has ID, first name, middle name, last name, email, home. Well, for the email has a, a constraint, a unique, and well. That's all for the DB. Okay, and also, we can see that we define a, well, this is vers version response. This message is only for uh, now if the server is running. But well, we also define the the request and the response for every RPC. This is the con the create request, the create response. We can see that for the create, we wanna we need to receive a, a contact. 
that is this one and the, this is the name of the of the type of the value and well for the response we're gonna response with a contact for the read we only need the id that we want to take and the response that is the contact the update is similar the contact and the payload that we want to see in the body we want to send in the body and the and then in the, re, the response we want to uh, add the contact and the has result for the id we only need the id that we want to delete and we don't we don't send nothing to the response uh is this is um, easier than we uh, this looks like a bit complicated but not really because um this is because this looks complicated because uh, we are defining all these methods in just in a few minutes but uh, for example if you are working with a real service and with a, in a db uh, uh, with many tables this will be easy for lady lay, uh, later uh, modifications because we only if we need to add a, a attribute we have only to add it here and will be easy because the auto generate code uh, will be the, do this automatically. So at the end, it's faster to work with JRPCs. So, okay, again, for this, we need to run the Proto C compiler. Make. Let me delete all these files. For show you that this is auto generated. As you can see, all these fields was automated. We have one specific for the goal. If we take a look, also the stroke was created and all the methods that um, will help us to easy manipulate the DB. Okay, for this, uh, also with this uh, goal plugin, we'll auto generate a uh, a uh, default server. In this default server, we can have automatically the, the read, create, update, delete. So for this, we have the, a constant. I wanna show you how the server is working with a constant with a version that has the, the current version. We have the get, that is the one that I showed you, only to see if the server is running. And in this server, we are adding the DB. A pointer to the DB, and we are returning a, a demo JRCP server. That is the name that we define for this uh, example. And an error is there, an error. And well, this is the a type demo server stroke with an with embedding an interface, the default interface that was auto generated by the goal, how I mentioned. And well, uh, as you can see, they receive a, a DB pointer. And in this file, JRPC, as we are creating the JRPC server, and we are adding the, the DB. We are uh, generating the connection to Postgres and all the um, connection exchange that we need. And uh, here we are creating the contact server. We are passing the DB. And we are similar, like in the previous example, we are registered the server. The server. And well, also you can see that you can have a, um, more um, inputs. We can define a interceptors, or also we can define a middleware, and we can do an. Um, an uh, specific operations that we need to add. For example, in this case, I'm just adding a, a logger to the context. So every time that uh, I call a function, our RPC, we can uh, take the values for this logger. Uh, or for example, we can add uh, a matrix or we can do some specific validations uh, to the to the contacts. For example, if we need to validate that, um, uh, that the email 
kind of BMP, we, we can define it, uh, uh, interceptor for this. And well, so we can configure a lot of things in, with, in the gRPC. And now I'm gonna show you how we can run the, ser the server. Uh, I'm gonna call. MD, MD, uh, the server, and I'm gonna run. We can see in the in the logs that we have our server running. We have a port specific for the gRPC. If we want to connect a a gRPC client, or if we want to do requests uh, by HTTP, we have another port. Okay, now that we can see that it's running, I want to do some requests. First, I, we want, I want to see that if the server is running property, I want to call version. And yeah, it's working property. Is this returning the version? That is the, we can see that is what we define here, the version. When we call get version, this will respond with the version. And in this case, a nil for the error. So it's working property. And also, how I mentioned, uh, this Gore plugin auto generate the the CRUD for a contacts table. So we can insert a, a record. Has been added. We can see this. And if we take a look to the DB. We can see it in a second. Okay. Okay. This is ID7, Robert. So take a look again. Okay. Okay. So now let's do a get for see the this value. Well, this is for the one. But we also have this value. The one that was created was the seven with eighty seven. We can see here. So this is working successfully. And um, but how I mentioned this was auto generated by the core. But what happened is we need to define uh, or specific functions for this. So in this case, we need to create or or type. I have an example for this. It's a Mm, I, I define this like type the server stroke that has the pointer for the DB and I have to implement all the methods that needs the the interface the get version the read the create the update that in this case is MP and the delete also is MP and in this function we can define a specific uh, Features for the function. Uh, for example, uh, for the version, I'm gonna send um, a message that the service is running. But uh, now, because because I have this defined, uh, and I'm gonna use a different type, I have to um, update the gRPC because previously was defined by the by the default server. And now we're gonna we're gonna use uh, an specific contact server, so we can see that we are uh, returning the, the server that we define here, the server with the pointer for the DB and a need a zero. Okay, now let's call get versions. But for this, uh, before we need to run again the server, and let's call version. The server is running, so it's working property, and we can also let me show you. We can add, uh, for example, I'm gonna print the context. The context is very important because we can uh, add how I mentioned specific values, um, like a logger, like a metric, or something that we want to do for or the token 
in this case, I'm going to show you the token, how this works. All the, um, the headers that we send in has HTTP will be stored in the metadata to the ARPC. So in this case, I'm going to send a token. And I wanna and just I want to print to print it in the logs. Also, we can see that we have the context. This is the value that has has different values, and also has one for the uh, logger. This is the one that I showed you here. The logger. Okay. Let's run again the server. Let's call the get version. Let's see the logs. Ah, okay, we have an error because now I'm validating that the um, that we need to send a authentication token. We say an error on the on, on authenticate request on authenticate with Vider. So for this, we need to add the authorization token. I'm gonna add it here. Let's call again the method and let's see the logs. I'm just printing the value, the token. This is the value of the token that is exactly this. So here is when where we can validate that if the token is correct, it has the enough permissions, and so on. So now uh, let's define a, a function for for the create. Uh, I'm taking the the logger from the context. I'm just print a method. Uh, I'm taking the payload. In this case, the contacts. We can see the payload. That is this. That is the contact. So we need, that's what we need to send. And I'm going to also validate. Uh, add a specific validation for the first name. That must be needs needs to be different to MP. And set a specific error. Also. Uh, it's important to mention that for uh, RPC, uh, that this has already defined a status error. So we can take a look and they have and uh, has a specific codes. Okay, cancel, no. These are different to the HTTP codes, but also we can define uh, a specific error if we want to add, and we can translate this to HTTP code. So in this case, um, if the the first name is MP, I'm gonna send an invalid argument and a specific message for this. Need to specify a first name. And let's run this again. Mm, okay, request. Let's send this as MP. With a different email because I define a constraint for this. So this needs to be different also. We can see that we have the error that we specify. Need to specify a first name. So now I can, I need to validate. A, I, yes, this is when we need to add in specific validations. Let's add name. Well, was successful. We can see, and this is with the ID eight. We have uh, the get also for this. We take the value, and the result is correct. We can see in the in that in the table is already stored. This is the record that we send in the in the request. So, as we can see, it's working. And um, there are many things that we can specify. We can also uh, uh, add um, different values for the for the RPC. Has metrics. We need to we need to define some um, like size of the the message. Uh, if we have to add um, um, maybe well, we can also implement some plugins for the for Swagger. 
or uh, a plugin specific for validate the request and do a lot of things with gRPC. Uh, well, I think and that's all that I want to show how it works. And also it's important to mention that, well, in this case, I'm just a, I'm working with a HTTP, well, a reverse proxy for, for can accept a HTTP request. But for example, if we have, a, if we have um, many microservices, we can connect a, each other with gRPC client, but for the specific request to the, to the client, we can uh, use this proxy. Uh, I think that's all of my part. Uh, so again, uh, any questions? Yeah, I, hello Eduardo, I have one question. Uh, do you know how to make uh, video streaming with gRPC? Video streaming? Oh, uh, well, I have some practice with streaming, but from the server and for this, what we have to do is how mentioned the gRPC is working with binary format. So this will be a like encode in, in in binary format and this will send has small uh, message. Um but, you just yeah. uh, split the video just in small sizes and uh, yeah. streams them one by one in binary format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, in a simple in a simple way. <laughs> yeah, got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other question? Okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you guys. Thank you for joining. Uh, that's all of my part. Yes, thank you, Gerardo, for your presentation. I believe this topic was in the air for a while, so we're waiting for a GRPC representation in our community as well. So, guys, yeah, uh, one more time, please take a look on the post in our workplace group, so you may share your any news or questions there, and hopefully this video, this recording will be there as well. Yep. Yes, yes, of course. Uh... Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Eduardo, for your speech. It was interesting to hear what you shared with us. Uh, hope to see you guys on our next Go community events. Thanks all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thanks for bye.